The New Patriotic Party unveiled its presidential candidate, signaling a critical moment in the country's political landscape as the nation gears up for the upcoming general elections. The announcement has generated significant attention and speculation about the party's prospects. With the NPP's storied history and recent tenure in power, the chosen candidates face the formidable task of maintaining the party's momentum and addressing the myriad of challenges Ghana faces. On Hot Issues today, we ask, is this the ticket to break the eight? That question has become even more crucial after the party's running mate courted public backlash for making comments many consider a slander of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. The political climate, voter sentiment, and the candidate's ability to resonate with the electorate will play pivotal roles in determining the outcome of the presidential poll. Now, while the NPP's established base provides them a strong foundation, the dynamic and evolving political arena means Nothing in this election is guaranteed. I am Kemeni Amano, and today I sit with a former national chairman of the party who has extensive knowledge of elections across the continent. He is a two-time campaign manager and led the party to victory in 2016 and 2020. Today, he is in charge of electoral affairs of the Baumia Opoku Prempe ticket. My guest is Peter McMenu. Chairman, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Kemeni. The event of last Tuesday where you unveiled your presidential ticket was going so well until the very last minutes when the, your Nkrumah comment came from the running mate who was being unveiled. How's the party process in that? Well, I think uh, I would not say how the party is processing it, but I have listened to various comments on it, on social media, on radio, TV stations, etc. Uh, some in favor, some against. But for me, as Peter McMahon, I think that, uh, like you rightly said, the program went very well, both at Mansha Palace and at the, at the grounds, what do you call it, Jubilee mm -hmm. Park. And the moment uh, Napo was speaking, I was there on the days. I did not anticipate any gaff or whatever you may call it. But I thought that uh, he has been given the opportunity. Mm. National Council has given his approval. Uh, he's now on a marketing spree for the party and for the elections. Was he marketing himself well when he made that comment? I would say that the election is about MPP and DC. So this issue about Nkoma, for me, it must be uh, made to rest because we are talking about an, an election scheduled for uh, December 7th between MPP, NDC, and others. So if you have been adored and you have such a huge crowd to come and watch you, uh, I would not concentrate anything about the late Kwame Nkrumah. Mm. I would rather concentrate on my competitors. I mean, you call it a gaff, but there are people who think that, listen, this is only testimony to how the NPP views Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. I am saying that on political platforms, many things happen and it has happened to many politicians. So we call it gaff in politics, mm. okay? I think MPP as a party has not come out to, to, to say anything about this. Because for MPP, it's a competition between the New Patriotic Party, the NDC, and others. I see. So but Kwame Nkrumah and CPP. I'm not taking... Uh, recently, I read somewhere that even CPP is not going to fill the candidates. And let's talk about the NPP. Because, again, while you say this is a guff, 
the person who made the comment, the running mate himself, says that he was only telling the truth. So, I mean, it would appear oh, that... he said that? Uh, absolutely. During Where? his visit to Wasa Memphi. I didn't hear uh, that. I'm, no, I'm, I'm telling you. Okay. It is, you know, it's, it's, it's fact, or, 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 you know, of this issue that indeed when he went to Wasa Memphi... So what is, what is, what is this comment? Tell me. Your in Kruma. Did mm -hmm. not even perform better than uh, Nana de Danko uh, Oh, okay. Uh, you can't I tell think, me. You I don't think know it's that. an unnecessary debate. Okay, that's what I'm saying. It's an unnecessary debate because currently we are going into an election and the key competitor we are fighting this election with is the NDC and others. So let us focus our attention. I, I, I don't know if you've listened to the public space, but the public are not happy about this at all. Uh, do you worry about the impact this so oh, comment alone oh, could have? Certainly, on when you are going into an election, there are a multiplicity of factors that come into play. And uh, let me tell you, like what Mrs. Margaret Thatcher said, one week in an election is a long time. The late UK first woman prime minister. So between now and December is a very, very long time. Mm. And I think that whatever uh, this particular issue has brought up, we should be able to make up with it before 7th December. Let's talk about that. Positive or negative. Mm. Yes. But which, which way do you think it will go? Positive or negative? I'm saying mm. we have close to six months to the election. To change that view. Let's talk about the backlash because there are those who have said that this is the reason the NPP shouldn't have chosen uh, NAPO. Uh, as you know, correctly predicted that uh, choosing NAPO is, is only a, a comment away from losing the elections. And right after that, after, after admonishment from the Otunfo, then the comment came up. I don't think this would have any major effect on MPP's uh, standing in the upcoming elections. It's an election that we are well prepared for now up to 7 December. And I keep saying that in election, if you are picking, you must pick up to the D-Day. And one week can even make the difference. Mm. So I'm, 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 not, uh, I'm, not, I'm not down mm. because of, of that. whatever transpired. Because if, if, if you look at the, the number of people, the people who came to hail Napo and MPP, both at Mencia and at the Jubilee Park, it, tells, it has a story to tell. Mm. Yeah. I see. What would that story be? The story would be he has a large following which can turn the tide mm. in favor of the new patriotic party, in favor of Dr. Baumia, mm. our presidential candidate. Mm. I, I want us to go into that large following, but the reason I made that preamble earlier was, was because I was going to the point that the NPP had spent uh, more than six months choosing somebody and it would appear that you chose a ticking time bomb. What were the considerations that went into picking Apple? That, uh, that question would be best be answered constitutionally by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, okay, then the presidential it. candidate, because he's the one under the MPP constitution who has the power to nominate a candidate for consideration or approval of... National Council, National mm. Executive. Okay, let's, I mean, let's break it down. Do you think Napo is, Napo is a ticking time bomb for the NPP? Not at all. I don't think so. Mm. I think he's the right guy. He has the stamina. He has the foresight, the vision. He has the experience behind him. And when you couple him with our leader, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, mm. they will take Ghana to the next level. To the next level. But even within the party, uh, that accession would not hold, hold sway with everybody. There are those who thought that he wasn't the right person uh, to, to, to have been cho chosen to partner uh, Dr. Baumia. Dr. Matthew Prempe, LKA Napo, had an overwhelming approval, not a dissent, at the National Council and National Executive meeting. So 
who is that somebody you are talking about? I mean, uh, Dr. Andi Apiakubi uh -huh. had made mention that, you know, he didn't think that... Andi Apiakubi is a member of the NPP Parliamentary Caucus. And the caucus itself came out boldly to support the nomination of Dr. Martin Wembe. Again, and I understand that. It all happened. But I'm saying that you cannot also, um, you know underestimate the, those who thought that Napo was not the right choice for his temperament. Who are those? Only and, and the appear could be you have mm -hmm. been able to mention. Mm -hmm. Who are the rest? And, and the appear could be is one out of 120, 37 members of parliament. It doesn't even count to 0.11%. Mm, yeah. I see. Yeah. So overwhelming support. To Over, well, well, clearly, that was an overwhelming support. Right. What do you say to people who think that Napo would need some training as far as his political public speaking is concerned? I think that every human being needs training. I need training. You go for training every now and then. And mm -hmm. I have been undertaking. I just spoke to you that I was coming from Uganda. I went under uh, training. You impart and you cross fertilize ideas and you also imbibe something. So every human being needs training. So I agree with you. Do you yes. have the time for that? Between now and December. Between now and December. Oh, very well. We have mm. very much. We have, we have so much time. I, I, I started the conversation with a quote from Mrs. Thatcher that one week in an election is a long time. I oh, hope so. But one of the things that has also been said about the event that was organized is the structure itself. Um, a comparative analysis has been made uh, about, about the structure of the NPP, unveiling and that of the NDC. And they, you know, people have come to the conclusion that uh, the, the format that you chose the rally format that the NPP chose was poor. It was unique, rather. I would say it was unique. And it brought on board the show of MPP's base and power. And we, are, we were able to achieve that. No two ways about that. Any, any journalist who was there will connect and know that this is the power base of the new patriotic party. So we send the right signal and we're able to achieve that. Don't you think you missed the opportunity for us to hear what Napo brings to the table oh. in terms of policy? Napo has not finished his job as a running mate on that very day. He didn't. He didn't finish his job. He will be going round and on hustings throughout the country. So let's leave that. That's I think what we wanted to achieve, we were able to achieve, to show our base, to show our power as a, as a new patriotic party. And mind you, what our, our, our competitors fear, what they fear most is for MPP to gather that kind of numbers in Ashanti, mm. our base. Because Ashanti is able to put them down in all the various regions that they win. I want us to talk about the numbers in a bit. You kept mentioning uh, sweeping the Ashanti region, uh, but the polls are saying that uh, give or take the, uh, you know, Napo said 85% and Akomia, who is the communications for the campaign, said at least 75%, but the polls are saying you would not make that. I would take everything that any poll says serious. Mm -hmm. Look at it and see how I can improve upon it. Even if it's 85, how I can improve upon it. If it's 60, how I can improve upon it. Because I myself, I've been a campaign manager for two occasions, and I have dealt with polls. I have to tell you, mm -hmm. I've dealt with polls. Other jurisdictions, Nigeria, Kenya, etc. I have followed polls. I have followed polls in the United States, where Mrs. Clinton was leading Donald Trump, but ultimately he lost the elections. So I don't take polls for granted. Eh? But everybody has polls. Everybody mm. makes his own I polls. See. And uh, MPP, we've also made our polls. And recently, Captain uh, uh, Professor Smart, mm, Smart polls Apple. also came up. 
Uh -huh. uh, Professor Smart Sapon's poll is NPP's poll? If ever it is. Oh, no. I'm not saying it's MPP you, people. You know, I'm, sure. I'm saying there have been polls that has also favored the MPP equally. There have been polls that have favored the NDC. Okay, so Chairman, I'm trying to understand. When mm -hmm. you said the NPP, we have our polls. Yes, Is polls it like that you, we you conducted won. polls or you're just referring to polls that I, have favored you? I think I started this matter on polls by mm -hmm. saying when I was a campaign manager, mm -hmm. I conducted my own polls. Okay. I'm not the campaign manager, mm. so I have not conducted any polls. Okay, all right. Okay. I, I was just, you all know, right. getting clarity but on that matter. I am saying mm. that in campaigns, anything that comes on board, any polls, you have to take it on board, dissect it, and look at how, if the figures are not in your favor, you can improve mm. upon it. If they are even in your favor, how you can maintain mm -hmm. that lead. Right. That's what I'm saying. So mean, I'm using the captain... Uh, Professor Sapon's mm. uh, polls as an example of another polls that's favoring the NPP. Indeed. Now, so I, I, I want to understand what, what do you think the party strategy should be if it, it, you know, it, it wants to win the election, if it wants to carry the Ashanti region like it hopes to? If you have followed the history of election results region by region in Ghana, you realize that if NPP crosses a certain threshold, eh, it wins the national election. And that is the beginning of that threshold that happened uh, last Tuesday. Yeah, so some people are fearing the outcome of what happened in, in, in Kumasi because the numbers, uh, you see, elections is purely a number game. Mm -hmm. That's why we in the Constitution, it says you need 50% plus one. It's numbers. That's why at the parliamentary level, they say first pass the post. It's numbers. And we used to say there has been an MP3 in Tema East, where Honorable Titus Glover, the current uh, greater Greta region, is won by a margin of three. So it's, it's a number game. Although I have heard and I have, I have gone to certain meetings, conferences, etc., where people will say, oh, MPP, you win the elections with only one region. Hey, Ghana is a unitary state, though. It's not like Nigeria, which is a federal state, and you need to win a certain number of states. Ours is a flat figure because we are a unitary state, wherever the number comes from, is immaterial. That's where the, what the Constitution says, that 50% plus one. It doesn't matter whether it comes from one region, two regions, five regions, 10 regions. But if you get 10 regions, and you're not able to match up to the 50% plus one, the Constitution will not give you the win. Mm. In Nigeria, you need 30, uh, uh, tw 24, 24 or so states. 24. Yeah. So uh, if you're dealing with a unitary state like Ghana, it's different. Even in Kenya, you need to win certain counties as a, 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 presiding, a presidential candidate mm -hmm. before you can win. But I mean, elections. can you blame those who think that the NPP's focus is in carrying the Ashanti region? And because if we carry and we get that numbers we want, we win. And it mm. has happened several times in our elections. Mm. Yeah. Mm. To what extent do you think that, you know, the current state of affairs in this country could impact your ability to do that? Oh, that is a global phenomenon. Globally, economies have run down, have gone down. There have been depression in so many countries mm -hmm. because of COVID, because of uh, Soviet Union invasion of uh, uh, Ukraine and supply chain disruptions. This has made global economies suffer. So I'm not surprised that incumbent governments are suffering. But all in all, some manage to win. And MPP is also going to win. Despite people's lived experience of how but but, but they will, compa the they, they, they will compare mm -hmm. and contrast. What would they be comparing and contrasting to? The pe person who wants to come in, what he was able to achieve during his era. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Now, so I want you to do the comparing and contrasting for me now. Oh. Uh, and, and how you still think that the NPP uh, is better uh, I, I won't be able to do that now, but all I can say is that Dr. Baumia has invited John Dramani Mahama to a debate. When was that? Oh, can I push that to you? Yes, please. Oh, let me push you, you, it to you. You. you can do that, but while you're doing that, one of the comparisons that has been made is the, you know, the currency exchange at three cities during the Mahama administration. Now is hey, Now you are going to three cities. I thought you said four point something. That's what I've heard people saying. But it, I mean, now. even if it's four point something, uh -huh. uh, it's about three, uh, three and a half times that right now. We are pushing 15 cities. Is that the comparing and contrasting we are going to be making? We will make it. How no, does that? We, we, I mean, we, we, it, I won't do that. Mm -hmm. I would rather give my presidential candidate who has made that request I'm sending to you now uh -huh. the opportunity. So, if John Mahama accepts it and you are seated, right. we will see. We will see. So again, in comparing and contrasting, people's purchasing power have, in, have decreased over the years. And you, you still insist that the NPP is doing better than uh, the previous administration? Very well. How so? Well. How so? Yes. How so? When we, our purchasing power has reduced? Where, where, which purchasing power are you talking I about? Mean, uh, Inflation? The standards... We can't even talk about inflation because we used to enjoy single-digit inflation. Today. Oh, but, but we too have enjoyed single-digit uh -huh. inflation. So the cost of... But I think that, uh, and I keep telling many journalists mm -hmm. this thing that about economic growth. Economic growth countrywide, globally, it's not something you can achieve throughout the lifespan of a country, if any. Okay? Sometimes you go up, then you nosedive, then you go up. There was depression in the UK recently. I don't know how far they have overcome it. There was depression in the United States. Our colleagues in Nigeria, in Kenya, in South Africa, in Egypt, in Togo, are all suffering. Mm. So don't expect that there is a country where who has started economic growth and has gone unprecedented throughout the lifespan of a country. It doesn't happen that way. I see. If, because if, if, there are certain features, mm -hmm. like I spoke about COVID and the, the Ukraine and all that, which you may not have the ability to control. And Extra again, the, the COVID-Ukraine explanation, I, I think that explanation is tired at this point. Uh, because then it, the MPP told us that they have the men. Oh, you, you can't only have the men when things are good. You, you should have the men who are able to turn things around when it is bad. So even if we accept the uh, COVID Ukraine explanation, we expect to see the men at work and the men are turning things around. Oh, the but, but let's, let's compare. Cost of living today, cost of living seven years ago. What, what, what would you say? Are they the same? Better, worse? Kemini? Yes. A country's growth and development has many branches. Okay. Okay. So you cannot use one line item to define the development or growth of a country. Okay. So if you go and use Kenke, a ball of Kenke that is being sold today at maybe 10 cities, 5 cities, or whatever, and that previously it was being sold for one year, one city. It's an error. Okay. It's an error. All right, because, so, so if we put cost because of living aside. Because inf inflation mm -hmm. from 1957 when we had independence has not been the same. When I was attending secondary school, my school fees was about 14 cities. When I went to UK at first, my FA was, I think, 33 cities. So, if you so want times to make, have changed. Yeah, times, times will continue to change. We live in a dynamic world. So let's say we are not using cost of living. Yeah, so what do you want to use? I, I should be asking you that. Oh, but look at education. Mm -hmm. Look at health. Look at freedom. And the human being. And that's why the new patriotic party, our motto is development in freedom. 
Look at the amount of freedom, governance, that the, this country has. You want to sidestep that? Well, I, 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 mean, I am telling you that we have abundance of freedom and security. Mm. It internal is also, it is, and external security. Right. It is also under this administration we've seen press freedom drop. That drop is absolutely rates. not true. I think I can face you on that. If the economic levels of journalists are not up to a certain level, it doesn't mean the entire press landscape is not free. We know that one of the things that this administration did uh, after journalists had complained over and over again was now to associate with certain journalists. And, and so when I say that press freedom has dropped, it is not only on the index, but it's also the fact that we have felt it in, the, in, in, in this country over the last seven years. Kevin, NPP believes in press freedom and freedom of the individual and freedom of enterprise. We don't, no, we don't only believe in press freedom. We believe in freedom of individual and freedom of enterprise. That is business. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you think, and I must say wrongly, mm -hmm. that there's no press freedom in this country, please, I will not accept that. I see. I, I would want us to come back and then discuss the issues, not only of press, but also on the subject of education, because you say education is one of those things we should look at, you know, in assessing the performance of the NPP. We'll be right back. Don't go away. My guest today is the former chairman of the ruling NPP, uh, Peter McMenon. Chairman, uh, thank you so much for sitting with us uh, once again. Right. So I, I do want us to, while we are on the subject of the legacy of the Akufuado led administration, I want us to also look at uh, the issue of education. Uh, it's one of those things that your running mate, particularly, is, ta is touted to have achieved a lot in that uh, you know, sector. So talk to us, what should we be looking at? Because the free senior high school. Coming in. Mm -hmm. The first day. When we won election 2016, mm -hmm. and Nana Kuvado was inaugurated on 7th January, I thought he was going to give some, some time to work on the free SHS. But that same year, the free, HS, free SHS was implemented. Then people began to ask, hey, where is he going to get the infrastructure to accommodate these huge numbers of people who are going to come on board? So the first day I heard from a cabinet minister that we went to cabinet and we have decided that we are going to introduce uh, this yellow, uh, uh, green, the various the various shift system with the various colors. And uh, we were wondering how we're going to implement that. But you see, that was a smart one. That was a very smart move because you have this size of room. And anytime students close around two o'clock, the place is empty. Why can't you utilize it for another batch? And then to make the man, the, the, the student teacher uh, uh, contact hours, same as what was existing in the mainstream A2, uh, one o'clock. That was a smart move. And when that was accomplished, through the Ministry of Education, we were able to absorb as many. You know, there were a lot of people in this country who wanted to go to high school, but they didn't have the wherewithal. So you, that one was a very smart, and we must, we must boldly, I mean, we must be boldly congratulate mm. the government of Nana Dodako Akufuado, in spite of what uh, Joe Mahama is saying, he started it or what Why knows. not? He's given evidence that he began this. Oh, I also have evidence of he and his people, his general secretary, speaking, making demonstrations going to the extent of even the Supreme Court to stop the free SHS.
from being implemented. So I also have that. I see. Yes. So, so um, are we are we admitting that you know this began with the John Mahama administration? I will not admit that. No, I will not. I will not because the moment Nana Kufuadu went on hustings and was trumpeting, if you give me the opportunity, I will bring a free SHS. They started objecting so, to it. So why, why did then candidate Akufuado then Lord John Dramani Mahama for uh, the free senior high school uh, he has started? You, ha you haven't seen that story, have you? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but you two have you seen the the, the, I, the I, story? I, I, ha I have seen the. We have story. seen the Mahama story. He, yeah, we have seen the Fifi Kwete story. No, hang on, uh, hang on. He 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 spoke about it again during no, his encounter. Don't let us debate this, because there's nobody on the street of this country who will tell you it's John Mahama. But he did start the progressive. Uh, pro I said go, free go, senior go high school. on the streets and ask. No, Chairman, hang on. He started the progressively free senior I'm high school. I'm not aware. Uh, which included the e-blocks, which included <laughs> the day students uh, having free school. Uh, but, but, of course, he was, he was kicked I, out of I'm government. I'm saying, uh -huh. if you go to the nook and cranny of this country and ask anybody who brought free SHS, you'll be let down. Please, no, don't go and be let down. You'll be let down. Because everybody knows it's the baby of Nana Adodanko. But why can't we acknowledge, if your candidates <sighs> then acknowledge Mohammed's So go to the streets and ask them. Go, to the, go on to the streets and ask them. But won't it be honest politics if uh, we acknowledge this? is not this? politician matter. It's uh -huh. those who have benefited, mm -hmm. those who are in their homes and in the streets. I'm saying, go and ask them. It's as simple as that. The NDC will think otherwise because the truth also is that we have seen evidence of the fact that, you know, the progressive, progressively free senior high school had begun under the Mahama administration just before they were kicked out. So but, why was he then kicking against that's, Nana Kufuadu? That's perhaps a question they, they'd have to answer. Ah, okay. but, but let's talk about okay. quality. There have been concerns raised about the quality in that there has been an over-concentration on quantity. I think if you say that, I would disagree. Okay. Because the results that have been coming out from WAEC, and Ghanaian students have won, is it the first position or so, at the annual hours in uh, Banjul, Gambia, WAEC. Student, one from St. John's, St. James Seminary in Sunyani. I know that he has won the overall best student. Mm. The other one, I think, was from, was in Fanstream and Wesley Girls. Right. Yes. So, so, I mean, so in terms of quality, I wasn't so, referring... So what are you I wasn't referring, referring to the results. I was referring to the quality of life that children have, particularly those in the boarding schools. Uh, it, it would appear to have declined. And some of the uh, head teachers have had reason to complain about this. You see, in life... Mm -hmm. And I think I've said this over and over again. We keep improving in life. There's nothing like you have reached the apogee, so you must remain there. What is important is that we want to change the life of young men and women by giving them access to free education. Otherwise, they would, nobody knows where they'll be. Okay. There's a story of a young man from... Uh, Eastern region, uh, the consequences, uh, whose mother mm. was on the, on the, on the TV right. crying. And then when he was absorbed into the free SHS, he made eight A's. Eh, because, and he was walking, I think, a distance of about eight miles a day to yeah. school. But when he was given the opportunity because of free SHS, he was able to make eight A's. And it's now doing superior, much better. So, and there are a lot of them like that. I met a young woman in Kumasi, even recently, at this zone. He said, hey, Chairman, me, my daughter has been able to access free education. She's now a nurse. You want me to retreat? As for me, 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 me my child gets to be a nurse. I don't, I'm not proud of it. So you go down there and ask people. How the, how, how the free HS has, has helped them. Part of the legacy of, this, uh, of the NPP, 
while it's in office will be the opulence that Ghanaians have seen. Um, first, let's look at the National Cathedral. Mm -hmm. The wastage that has happened over there, uh, it will haunt you as you go into election 2024, won't it? It won't haunt us. Why not? It won't haunt us. It's an ongoing project. And I think that any, any, anybody who comes on board, mm -hmm. be it Dr. Baumia, and it's going to be Dr. Baumia, he will continue. It is one of those things that is regarded as, you know, we've spent a lot of money, but there's only a, nothing to show. Uh, In the case of the uh, National uh, Cathedral, uh, uh, is that Have you built a house before? Mm. And I was building my house. I had to dig the hole. The hole you are talking about. There's no house without a foundation. But did the hole cost you over $200 million? Oh, I, I'm not building, I didn't build that size of a house. But I'm saying, any house you want to build, this building, there is a lot of uh, uh, groundwork that had to be done. You need a solid foundation to raise the structure. So what is wrong with that? It's the foundation. And ultimately, when the structure comes up, mm. we'll see. I see. Yeah. What and you see, I, I have traveled to other countries and seen... Uh, structures like that in, in Cote d'Ivoire, mm. in UK, in other jurisdictions. Uh, it will not be out of place that a country like Ghana will have such a magnificent building. It's mm. iconic. Everybody's going to use it. And mm. it's for both spiritual and other purposes. So don't belittle it. I see. I want to look at two things. Uh, the first being the fact that, you know, this administration has said, and again, things to come and haunt you. This administration has said that public funds were not going to be used, but we know that it that didn't happen. It wasn't true. If public funds went into uh, digging that hole. Uh, we also know that the NDC's flag bearer has said that uh, for the wastage we have seen, when he comes into office, or if he comes to office, he would ensure that you know a forensic audit is is conducted into that, and uh, people found palpable, palpable will be made to face the law. Your take on oh, that? Of course, if people have done the wrong things, why can't they face the law? If people have done the wrong things, but there shouldn't be any witch hunting, and in any case, he's not going to come to power. I'm telling you. He is not going to come to power. Where is he going to find a 50% plus one? Where? Tell me. Tell me. Because the northern region, which used to be his base, is now under serious attack. Ashanti is a no-go area. Greater Accra, the margins will not be much. Mm. I'm telling you the numbers. I mean, why do you think... So you, you must panic. Well, I mean, why do you say that the northern region is under serious oh, attack? Because, what, it, what is, because what, now... What your candidate's now, there? Now, MPP has a northern candidate. Right. Yes. We also have a northern candidate. But you've, you've always had a northern oh, running have, the last have, seven years. Look, this is not Kenya. Under Kenya laws, both the running mate and the candidate display their pictures on the ballot paper. Uh -huh. Okay? In Ghana and Nigeria, it's only the presidential candidate. And the logo of the party, the great Osuno, mm. the Osuno logo, a well-known logo, mm. ha, that will but appear But Dr. Baumia has been one of the most famous uh, you know, running mates <laughs> we've ever had in this country. And, and so then, whether or not his picture was there, it really does not determine, uh, you know, it, it does not explain anything. No, I, That's the point I, I, I'm making. I'm saying but, 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 I'm, that, but I'm saying that, that if you really had some weight, you would not, Northeast would not be the only region that the NPP gets in. in, in I, did I say North? North? I didn't say North, Northeast. No, I'm telling I you, based on, ba based on. I didn't say Northeast. Don't put words in my mouth. No, Chema, Chema, listen to me. I, I mean, based, based <laughs> I on said the north. results of the past. No, yes. Mm -hmm. But the results of the past, look at Northern region, look at Northwest. Mm -hmm. uh, look at Northeast, look at Savannah. We have improved considerably. Uh, uh, you have improved, but you haven't been able to take it away. This is the time. This is the time. Yeah. What's given? So it's a gradual shift. Is it only by virtue of Dr. Baomir's ethnicity that you think you're going to sweep the North? 
Dr. Baumia's boldness, his affability, his vision will take Ghana to the next level. And the north? I was hoping that you you oh, was... when, when I say Ghana, mm -hmm. I'm we are talking about elections in Ghana, and I'm saying previously, no, but, but I I'm to saying previously, look at the north. previously, mm -hmm. you know, for example, in the northern region now, we have nices, and this has not. It has never happened like that before. So gradually, we are coming up. If you go up to the other uh, 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 regions, we are moving up. We are mo we are always moving up. We are catching up with them. Mm. Uh, you, you must uh, be, be panicking or look at the figures. If you, that's why I started the conversation. And why should I panic? I'm not in the elections. You mean the NDC should be panicking? Of course. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, they must panic. Okay. Uh, and they are panicking. Okay, uh. you think so? But <laughs> while, while, while you say that you are, you are coming up in uh, you know, places where the NDC is known to win the elections, um, they are also coming up in a place like the Ashanti region in a place like the eastern region, western region even. And we also know that on the tickets this time, there are two uh, people who are eating away some of your, your votes. Alan Tremontaine, one of those, Nana Kwame Bediako as well, based on what we've seen in the polls. And so that attacks what you are able to do in the Ashanti region. A aren't you scared of that? I'm not scared at all. I'm not scared at all because... If you look at, you see, the numbers are in Ashanti, Greater Accra, Eastern. And I can assure you that we are very solid in these three regions. And we are doing very well in the other regions. If you go to Western North, we are doing extremely well. No, I, no, no let's, fo let's focus on the Ashanti region. Yeah, we are focusing on the elections in Ghana. I know, yeah. but I want us to talk specifically about the Ashanti region. You've been campaign manager before. Mm -hmm. so, so let's look at the Ashanti region, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that Alan Kwejo Chiramantin and Kwame Bediakon and even the NDC mm -hmm. are showing signs of clawing back on some of your votes. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? What you saw last Tuesday in Kumasi should dispel any of that rumors. I call it rumors. I should call it rumors. Mm. And that with Napo on board, many, many, many other people are also coming on board. Mm. Okay? And if you listen to what Canada and Japan said on right. their platform, it resonated with the Ashantis mm. very well. So, uh, this election, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the favorite and he is going to win. I mean, if you were to advise the campaign, um, what would you advise them to do, particularly in the Ashanti region, to ensure that all these other candidates who have the ability to affect your uh, uh, you know, voter percentage there uh, are not able to do that? I'm a member of the campaign. Yes. I head the campaign's electoral committee. Mm -hmm. So I've been giving whatever advices <laughs> I have to the campaign. I attend campaign meetings regularly. No, so you tell so, us. What, okay. I mean, what, what does the you party... You want me to bring a campaign strategy into the public domain? Uh, that's never done. Everybody has a strategy. But I've, I've given you snippets. Uh, I've given you snippets. I think that's enough. Mm, uh, I see. Uh, and you are very confident that you take it. I have said that again. And let me repeat that this election, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the favorite and he's going to win. I, I, I want to talk about the greater Accra region because it's one of those uh, yeah. areas that Go you ahead. mentioned. The polls don't show that uh, the greater Accra region is favoring the NPP. In fact, a poll conducted in strongholds of the party are here. Constituencies, that is, in the greater Accra region show that there's a lot of work to be done. There seems to be a 10% decline, which goes uh, in favor of the NDC. I have said that every election needs hard work. And uh, Dr. Shula, who was Angela Merkel's campaign manager for three consecutive elections. You know, Angela Merkel won three successive elections. I met him at a meeting in Berlin, and he told me 
the success of every campaign is hard work. It's hard work. There's no magic anywhere. It's hard work. And MPP, under the leadership of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, is working extremely hard. I see. Yes. We'll come back with a bit more. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest is uh, former chairman of the NPP. We've been discussing the NPP's ability to break the eight, as they say. Uh, uh, chairman is telling us that it, it is possible. It uh, the, is absolutely the Ghanian, possible. The Ghanaian people don't think so. But I want us to look, talk about the uh, Elections Management Body, the Electoral Commission of Ghana. Um, the NDC has said that they do not trust the... Electoral Commission. Does the NPP trust the Electoral Commission? You see, I have been a member of IPAC mm -hmm. for a very long time, honestly. And uh, because of my experience of IPAC, it may interest you to note that the UNDP in Nigeria consulted me to set up IPAC Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have worked under different... ECs, electoral commissioners, from Farijan through Charlotte to all of them. Uh, NDC is playing some games. And I can see through it. They want to tag the current EC as a child of the new patriotic party. But let me tell you, Kemeni, MPP won elections in, 20, in 2000 mm -hmm. under President John Ajekun Kufo, when I was also the regional chairman for Western Region. At that time, Dr. Farijan, who was the electoral commissioner, was appointed by the NDC. Rawlings appointed him. MPP again won elections in 2016 under Madame Charlotte Osei with a margin of victory of over one million votes. We did not appoint Charlotte Osei, but we won the elections. Mm. So it is the capacity and the ability of the party and its campaign strength mm. that should be able to determine any fraud do you, do you trust the Electoral Commission to deliver a successful, free, and fair election? Very well, they will deliver. Mm, I see. They delivered in 2020. Mm, mm. I see. I want to take you back on the issue of Charlotte Osei because I remember uh, correctly that even while she was there, this party also, your party, the NPP, also said that uh, Charlotte was in bed with the NDC uh, as far as her management of the Electoral Commission is concerned. And what did it end? No, I so the, 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 was that able to prevent us from the victory? Y yes. Tell so, me. So, so, so then. My, so, my, so don't let them put any, any, any. What was the word? They should not. They should not lead us to believe what they are saying. We don't believe what they are saying. So when the MPP said it's that back then. It's a camouflage. Then, so when the MPP said that back then, it was also a camouflage. It wasn't a camouflage because we came up with details. We came up with details. But the NPP is also coming when, out with wait, details. Wait, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. When we said the voters register is not right mm -hmm. and that the, the materials, the, the voters list contains foreigners, we were able to uh, bring evidence mm -hmm. from the Togolese uh, uh, register and you could see People wearing the same shirt, the same name on Ghana's register, on, on, on Togolese register. I displayed that to the media. Huh? Was that a lie? So the best thing to do was to remove those people. But we fought and fought. We couldn't. Because they said we should go to Togo and bring. <laughs> eh? When I found a Nigerian who was on the Ghana. Electoral Commission's uh, register and on, 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 on the Nigerian register in uh, Abia State. 
And I was able to show it with the pictures and identity, and especially when they didn't change so, their name and their date of birth. So, so why why is this time a camouflage? Because you are in government. Because, because they, they haven't been able to prove the way I do. And, and, and I'm coming to that. Uh -huh. the, this is the electoral commission uh -huh. that didn't tell us that. And for me, lost let me add. For me, it got to a point we had to go to the Supreme Court. Right. So this is the Electoral Commission that did not tell us that they had lost devices until the minority raised it in Parliament. This is the Electoral Commission uh, that has, you know, gone back on calculations that it has done. Electoral Commission that for some what reason... What calculations? Uh, 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 during the, uh, you know, the registration process, we know that some numbers they had brought up, they went back to oh, correct okay, those. Okay, and, okay. and then the explanation was that they were using coral, coral draw. Kamini, if you follow elections, there is something we call transposition error. If you are putting numbers together, 621, you can mistakenly make it 126. Were there not one too many? Well, if there are one too many and they are genuine, you have to just do, make the correction. How do we know they are genuine? It's only the NPP oh, that is so, making the point that these were genuine mistakes. It's not NPP. It's the agents, which included all other political parties, including the NDC. Mm. Yes. And I'm happy mm. that this matter has come up because only two days ago or three days ago, CDD came up, has come up with a suggestion that there must be a method, a methodology of correcting errors because everybody admits that as human beings, there can be human error, trans mm. transposition errors. Yeah. Is the MPP packing or planning to pack it, it's uh, supporters or, you know, affiliates, if you like, in the recruitment process of the Electoral Commission? The recruitment is open. Mm -hmm. I saw the adverts. And let me tell you one thing I did when I was regional chairman. Because under the CI, eh, under the CI, you can object to any names because... The EC under the CI is supposed to put up the names, to post the names with pictures of all the people, temporary officers that they have mm. recruited. And any citizen can go and object to the inclusion of these names as officers, as election officers, with reasons. And the same law says within five days, the EC must respond so, so, so as a strategy, so are you, are I you went, packing? I, are you, I, I'm, are telling you you, I'm telling you what I did. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. in Western Region, mm -hmm. went to every single district office of the EC mm -hmm. with my team of constituency officers to look at the pictures and names if we have any evidence against them. So how can you pack? How are you going to pack well, when there is this law? I see. Yeah. But, but that, that was you then, when you were in opposition. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, you now, you are in the ruling uh, government. Mm -hmm. um, and you think I won't do it? No, no, no hang on. <laughs> I will do it. I will do it again. I want you to answer my question. All right, really. go ahead. Are you staffing the temporary, temporary staff list of the Electoral Commission I, I am as part not, of your electoral strategy? I am strategy? not in any way staffing. And I will even go to the extent of checking my opponents. Mm. Yes. To ensure they are to not ensure staffing. To ensure they are not staffing. Okay. Yes. I, I see. Yes. I, I, because you see, there's also one thing, and I mm. told people in Ethiopia recently, mm. that look, you, this is your huge country with over 100 and something million people. You want some one commissioner to sit in Addis Ababa and decide your fate when the elections are declared at various uh, polling stations. Mm. We have, now we're going to have about 42,000 polling stations. Mm. If you are going to have 42,000 polling stations, how can Mrs. Mensa stay in Accra here and decide who wins? Whereas any election result at every polling station is also under the law posted at the police is, 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 is the party is, is, is the party worried about the missing devices and the ability to compromise the elections? I know I'm not worried about it at I all. Do. It can't in any way. It can't in any way. Because you see, one, our election is not electronic. Two, two. This was registration. And it is it is various components make up the kit. Mm -hmm. Various components. Mm -hmm. You have the computer, 
you have the scanner, you have the uh, uh, camera. So the entire, so if the computer alone is taken mm. out of it, it's not complete. I see. It's not complete and it can never be complete. Chama, thank you for and coming. And you need to decode before you can even use it mm. because it's coded. I thank see. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We'll continue. We will, indeed. We will, indeed. <laughs> My guest today has been former chairman of the NPP, Peter McMahon. We've been having discussions all about the elections of this year, 2024. We've been looking at the polls. We've been talking about uh, whether or not the NPP can indeed break the eight. Or, you know, the, the signs we see of this time is also a sign of they being kicked out of office. But you make the judgment. We'll be back with another uh, episode next week. Bye-bye.